Hi there. If you're anything like me, you are probably sick and tired of seeing a whole bunch of fake gurus out there or consultants that are showing you how to do what to do, but they don't actually go into the detail of how to do things. So uh, I'm trying to do things a bit differently with, with this webinar. So if you are in a place where you are trying to reach out to prospects and you find that you typically have anywhere from under 30% open rates and your response rates are usually anywhere less than 50%, you're in the right place. Uh, I'm actually going to to go through a detailed process to show you how exactly I craft emails, how I find companies, how I find the right decision makers, and how I get their contact info, their emails, and actually send it to them. I've used this effectively to reach out to decision makers at companies like Thinkific, Lush, Rework, uh, and I've worked with companies to use it to find investors and reach out to investors as well. So I guarantee you that this will work. <clears throat> this is not your regular webinar funnel. I'm actually not going to ask for your email at all. You have my email instead. Uh, and my goal here is, you know, you qualify yourself. If you are interested, if you need help, then reach out to me. Uh, nothing to sell here. I'm not going to push you to anything. There's no tease and sign up. I'm not going to give you a little bit of info and kind of hide all the secret sauce. You get everything up front. So uh, who is this for? If you are in sales or if you are a founder, uh, this process will help you. It will actually show you how to build your emails, uh, how to build your list and craft the emails. Uh, if you are selling B2B, business to business, if you're B2C, this will not help you as much because you're probably better off spending time on marketing. Uh, if you have uh, products or services that are less than $300 in value, again, not worth your time because uh, sales outreach does take up a lot of time. And if your products are less than $300, the revenue that you get from selling them does not make up for it. So spend your time on marketing instead. Uh, and lastly, if you haven't identified your target customer, don't waste your time here, right? If you don't know who the decision maker is, if you don't know who your ideal customer profile is, then you are jumping too quickly to trying to do outreach. This is not for you if <clears throat> you don't actually solve the problem. If you have a product or service that's a nice to have, uh, this will not be beneficial because it's really hard to do cold outreach uh, to convince someone if they don't actually have a problem. Uh, number two, if your product or solution is pre-launched, if it doesn't actually work yet, right? Uh, if you are pre-launch or if your product or service doesn't actually work yet, focus instead on building product that actually meets your customer's need, getting to that problem solution fit. Uh, focus more on figuring out who's your ideal target customer, what's the right channels to reach them at. Uh, and lastly, if you have management that is inflexible, because some of the stuff that I will talk to today will uh, involve helping you change your process and your systems and possibly even your strategies as well. So it's not just techniques. Uh, so if you have management that is inflexible, you probably won't be able to implement some of these things. So nothing to sell here. Be at ease, relax. I'm a skeptic like you. I've been through so many workshops where people talk about how they'll give me value and not actually give it to me. My goal with this workshop is just to be authentic and transparent and give you something that you can walk away today and actually use and get real results. Uh, obviously, you know that this is just a slice of the pie because uh, email outreach is only one small part of sales, right? I can talk about all other things, including pricing, revenue strategies, uh, but I guarantee you that you'll be able to use whatever I go through today. Uh, if you want more, feel free to reach out to me. You have my email. Feel free to check out some of my other webinars, uh, but let's dive into it. Some background, uh, my name is Chen. Uh, if you're wondering why you are here listening to me, why I might have something to give of value, uh, I come from a background in corporate sales, I spent five years there. And then the last five years, I actually worked in a social venture incubator accelerator. So during that time, I've worked with close to 400 entrepreneurs and I've had the, the great opportunity of working with a lot of creative startups, uh, mentors and investors. So what I'm trying to do with some of these things is I'm marrying some of the best practices in corporate, but also some of the creative input from the startup world. And I'm giving it to you so that you can actually apply it in your context as well. I am a sales and operations expert, so that's where you can get the most value out of me. Uh, if you have any questions around sales techniques, sales processes, revenue optimization, pricing, uh, how to automate processes, then I'm your go-to guy for that. Uh, this is what we'll cover today. So we'll go into how to optimize emails so that they actually land in inboxes, because a lot of emails will tend to end up in spam or promotional promotions folders. Uh, we will talk about email copy, so how to write emails that people will open and actually re reply to. And then we'll go into list building, how to find the companies, the decision makers, and their contact info. First off, the first thing you need to know is there is a difference between sales and marketing email. 
<clears throat> a lot of sales reps out there, they use tools like ActiveCampaign, MailChimp, or sometimes even HubSpot to send emails. HubSpot is great as a CRM, CRM tool, but don't use it to send emails. And there is a difference there because if you're sending an email through a mail client, it is actually more of a marketing email. It's more suitable for marketing emails rather than sales emails. The reason why is because when you send from a mail client, those emails are more likely to end up in the spam or promotions folder. And this is why it happens. It's because those emails are being sent on behalf of many companies through a mailing server to many different recipients. So for example here, you can see a company A sending a lot of spam email and that, that company is sending it through MailChimp and it goes to a whole bunch of recipients. And let's say recipient number one over here starts to flag company A's emails as spam. What's gonna happen is it's going to start to train his or her inbox that emails coming from MailChimp are spam. And in return, all emails coming from MailChimp, whether it's from company A or another company, will likely end up in the spam promotions folder for this recipient. <clears throat> if enough people are flagging uh, those emails as spam, it will actually affect the whole entire server itself. And all of the emails coming from MailChimp from any company going to any recipient will likely end up in the spam or promotions folder. So obviously, uh, some of these mailing clients, they try to manage that. <clears throat> and they mitigate that by having you use double opt-in features, which is why you need to always validate your email, uh, you know, have you validate your DNS records. Uh, they, they switch around your mailing servers so that it's not always coming from the same uh, server. But despite that, there is no foolproof way. Your email will still likely end up in the spam or promotions folder at some point. Uh, so it is really a, a limitation of the tool, right? Uh, I've worked with CEOs where, where they say like, hey, why, why are my email open rates so low? There's nothing you can do if you're sending it through these kind of clients. The best situation is to send it through your inbox. So I'll show you and I'll talk about some caveats on, on what you need to know when you're sending from your inbox as well. <clears throat> so let's jump into sales email framework. So when you're crafting email, uh, before you worry about the copy, you first need to get good open rates. If nobody's opening up your email, it doesn't matter how great your, your body is. If no one will actually open your email, they can't reply to it, right? So how do you get people to open? You focus on the subject line. So optimize your subject lines before you optimize your body. A good subject line is short, personalized, invokes curiosity, and it asks, or it asks a question. So for example, you could say, uh, John said I should speak to you. So that invokes some curiosity and it's personalized as well. Uh, it could be like, I found Acme Co on LinkedIn, right? So again, invokes curiosity, it's personalized, it's short, right? Or you could say, uh, who's the best person to speak to about marketing in your company, right? So again, there is, it's asking a question, it invokes some curiosity, prompts a response. So in the copy itself, in the body of the email, <clears throat> a good email is short and sweet. Uh, it should be easily readable. It should be mobile friendly as well. So try not to have line breaks, single line. Don't let it go into a second line. Use spacing to your advantage. So, so short and sweet, no wall of text. Uh, you want to craft it in the format where it looks like it's a plain text email. HTML here, it's okay to, H to have HTML coding in your email because some of you might use um, mail tracking tools where it tracks your open rates, your response rates, but don't format it where you have like a lot of images or color. Just keep it as simple as possible so it looks like it's coming from an inbox. Avoid jargon, even if you're sending a technical detail, technical email to a technical recipient, and write as if you're writing to someone that you know. Make it very personal. So if you use a mail merge tool, which we will get to later, uh, you want to avoid using those merge tags when you craft the initial copy because you will tend to use very distancing language from your recipient. So just actually say like, hey, John, I found Acme Co on LinkedIn. You know, I thought you should check this out or whatever it is. So make it very personal. Don't say like, hey, I found company name true you know, source, when you start to write in that way, it becomes very unnatural. Um, <clears throat> and at the end, every email should have an ask. Have one ask, no more than one ask. If you have too many questions in the email, people need to think to reply, then they either spend more time and they get back to you later and they forget to reply to your email or they just think it's too much of a bother, right? One simple, easy email, easy for them to say yes. So this is the framework I want to introduce you. It comes from Ramit Sethi's book, uh, 50 proven email scripts. And the email sequence is, it's a four email sequence that helps you follow up without being pushy. So the first email is the intro email. Then the reminder email is the second one. And then the third one's actually not an email, it's a different touch point. And then the fourth email is what we call the breakup email. And it works. I've tested this sequence out. I guarantee you that 
if your response rates are around five to 10%, you will at least see 30% uh, response rates, even if you have terrible email copy, right? I, I personally get response rates of anywhere from 70 to 90%, and I'll show you some of my results. But if you use this framework, I guarantee you it will work. I, I've worked with companies and I've had them use it and it works with them as well. So <clears throat> um, the goal here is when you are using emails, you are trying to escalate the conversation. Your goal with the first email is to get a yes, get permission to continue the conversation. You're not trying to get them to buy in the first email. So in the first email, here's how it goes. You break the ice by talking about how you found them, right? You provide some context. You provide some relevant and sincere praise. Uh, don't just flatter people. Don't just say, hey, I thought your company is an amazing company. You might say, hey, I read a blog that you had about uh, green buildings and I thought that was a very interesting article, right? So that's a bit more relevant, it's sincere. You provide your intro, so short and sweet. Uh, make sure it's relevant and it provides some context on why they might want to speak to you. And then you make the ask. The ask here should be easy to respond. It should be a close-ended yes or no type of question, or you might ask to meet with them or maybe have coffee. And then you want to pro use this technique called the white narrow technique. So I'll, I'll break it all down. Uh, so an example here is you might say, hey, I found your company on LinkedIn because I was looking for architectural companies. Or I, I was speaking to John about companies that might need uh, data security support and he recommended I speak to you, right? So that's how you got to know them. Uh, and then praising, I gave that example there. Intro, you might say, hey, uh, we help companies with raising capital, uh, especially if you're raising from impact investors. So there's some relevancy there. And then asking for the response, white narrow, how it looks like is, you might say something like, does Monday 11 p.m or Tuesday uh, 4 p.m. work for you. If neither of those times work, I'm also happy to work around your schedule. So the specific times like Monday 11 p.m. that is specific, that's the narrow portion. It's easy for them to say yes. It's not open-ended. You're not saying like, when do you want to jump on a call, right? They don't have to think. They can just go look at the calendar. Oh, the time works, they can say yes. Uh, and you're using the white part. If neither of those times work, I'm also happy to work on your schedule because you're making the ask. And there is a power dynamic here. You're the one asking for a favor. You don't want to come across as being a bit pompous if you just say, you know, here are my times. You want to say, I'm happy to work around your schedule if neither of those times work as well. So that is the first email. Short, sweet. It shouldn't be more than three paragraphs long uh, and it should be easily readable. <clears throat> Second email, you send about two to three days after the first email. And it's a simple like, hey, not sure if you missed my email. I'm just giving this a bump in your inbox. So that's one way of phrasing it, right? You repeat the ask. That is it. Don't send them other info. Don't send them like, hey, I thought you should check out this blog or register for my next event. Like if you do that, it becomes spammy, right? So this is how you stay persistent without coming across as being pushy. Uh, and it's just a simple reminder. Third email is actually not an email, like I mentioned. You send two to three days after you reach out on some other platform. You might cold call them. Maybe you're gonna reach out on LinkedIn or Twitter. You might just say, Hey, I'm following up on my email. Not sure if email is the best way to reach you. Just thought I'd try connecting with you on Twitter. Just thought I'd try giving you a call, right? <coughs> so that is the third contact point. Uh, and if you are calling them or if you are reaching out on Twitter, for example, they might be online or they might actually pick up the call. So be prepared to dive into conversation if they do, because you might not just get the voicemail. And <clears throat> email number four is what we call the breakup email. So you start by doing the guilty parachute. So this is how it looks like. The guilty parachute starts with the uh, easy out. So you might say something like, I'm not sure if you've been away from the office because of COVID. Or maybe you might say, not sure if you're away because of summer, right? So you give them an excuse to say like, hey, yeah, sorry, I haven't replied because I was busy. <clears throat> and then you make them feel a bit guilty. So here are a few examples. You might say something like, sorry to follow up again. Just thought I'd try one last time because I really, your feed I really value your feedback because you're an expert in this industry. Or you might say, you know, Amy mentioned that I should speak to you because you are a, a great influencer in the space and I should definitely reach out. So again, they, they feel a bit guilty because it might damage their reputation. Or you might say, hey, uh, your company has really built up a good reputation in this data security space and I thought that you might really care about this, so I thought I'd just try one last time. So it makes them feel a bit guilty, but you're also giving them the easy out. And then you just say, last try, not going to bother you again if I don't hear back. And then you just repeat the ask. That is it. That is the fourth email. And if you do this correctly, you will not, I guarantee you, come across as being spammy. And the question I typically get asked at this point is what about uh, Castle or GDPR regulations, like spam regulations? Uh, if you send it this way, you will not come across as spammy because you're not sending them, adding them to your newsletter. You're not sending them other info. 
uh, and their emails. I'll show you how to get them in a second. But all these emails are publicly available emails. You're not like hacking a list or anything like that. So let's look at some examples, some case studies, and we'll dive into the copy. I'll do a lot of critique. <clears throat> so I'll read this one out. So this one over here, hi. I like to do custom corporate socks for your company. They make a great fit for tier one clients or great giveaway. Working with easy, check out brand book here, pricing, let me know your thoughts, check out our work here, check out my website. So obviously, uh, let's talk about the good things first. So good things, short, easily readable, good use of spacing, that's it. Uh, bad, way too many call to actions. There's four different things I see, right? Brand book, check out our work, let me know your thoughts and the website, four different things. Pricing, no, no, right? You're not trying to get people to buy in the first email and it's not personalized. So it's just, hi, right? He could easily find out my email. This is another example. Uh, discounts or perks uh, for entrepreneurs of Spring Vancouver. So good subject line, prompts curiosity. So I did open it. <clears throat> the other thing to note over here, it went to the help at spring.is email and there's no personalization because it's not a, to a specific person. Uh, I'll show you how to actually avoid that, but this is one warning sign. Like you, you don't want to send to like those help at or info at or hello at kind of email addresses. Uh, it's quite easy to find the actual email. I'll show you how to do that. So his opening statement, I'm Daniel, CEO of Edit. He's starting with his intro. Don't do that. Start with how you found the company first. Uh, and then he jumps to pitching Edit. He talks about, you know, we offer a discount. These are some of our features, one gigabyte of space, access to thousands of exclusive designs. You know, why do I care, right? Focus on what's in it for me, what's in it for the customer. <clears throat> one way he could rephrase it could be, uh, you know, we are at it uh, and I noticed that you are a incubator accelerator. And typically we find that in companies that are in, in incubation or acceleration programs are too early along to work with marketing agencies because marketing agencies are expensive. Uh, we offer flexible plans that allow startups to work with us. So that might actually prompt more interest from me rather than just saying like, here's what features we have, right? Talk more about the values rather than the features. <clears throat> this is another email. I want to um, bring some things to your attention. So number one, spacing and line, good, easily readable. Terrible use of bolding. I don't know why everything is bolded except for a few places here and there. Uh, no personalization, terrible subject line. Uh, feature dumping over here, don't do that. Uh, one thing I want to highlight, look at the first sentence. My apologies, I may have disturbed your schedule with this email. Never start by being apologetic. Open by framing because you have value to give, right? So you're saying, hey, I found you through this. Uh, and then you make it relevant for them and you have something good to give to them. The call to action, note that as well. If you're interested, share your requirement, then I can send a company information and affordable quote. That's bad because it's too big of an ask. It requires me to put together a lot of info to reply. Uh, and he could have made it better with a question mark at the end. So if you ask a question at the end, people are more likely to reply rather than just making a statement. So this one over here, <clears throat> another email. This is actually a follow-up email. So bad, look at that. Subject line, follow-up, email, exclamation mark. Don't do that, right? Uh, it kind of insinuates that you're, you're being a bit pushy that people are not replying to you. Um, notice that the merge tag is not done correctly. It says dear Chang Chen Heng, like try to avoid dear first off. It, nobody really uses that uh, greeting anymore nowadays. Uh, just use my first name. Don't use my full name there. It kind of looks a bit awkward. Um, but yeah, it comes across as being pushy. It's sent via a Hotmail account as well. That's kind of a warning sign, right? Why is it coming from a Hotmail account? Try to use um, a personal company email if possible. So this other email, uh, whew, where to start? Big wall of text, too many call to actions, too many links, right? Link, link, link. Um, same issue with the merge tag. Hi, Chang Ching Heng, full name. So try to avoid that. Uh, good stuff, subject line does invoke curiosity. He tried to personalize, although the merge tags didn't work very well. Uh, he's building credibility, you can see over here. We have confirmed the participation of Honda, Toyota, Siemens. So he's name dropping using some urgency. So if you see over here, the deadline for application is two days away. So good to use urgency in the email, but try to have your call to action at the end of the email rather than in the middle, because people will forget what you want them to do if they read something else and you don't, re you don't reiterate it. 
Uh, so those are some observations from that email. Let's look at some good emails then. So this one over here uh, was actually uh, a draft that was created by a participation uh, participant from one of my workshops. Uh, and still room for improvement, but it, it's a big step above some of the other ones that you just saw. So it says, hello there, I was reading about Chief's virtual launch in Boston and think that the support you provide for women C-suite executives is awesome. So that provides context, how she found uh, Chief, right? Through the virtual launch in Boston, uh, relevant and sincere praise. The support you provide for women C-suite executives is awesome. Second line could be remove. Uh, she's trying to build some rapport over here by talking about some common ground, but it becomes a bit awkward because this is not relevant to the email. And then she does an intro, and then she tries to build some credibility by talking about a workshop that she's done with the Brazilian Congress. And then she puts a link here. So I would actually recommend like remove this link. It distracts you from the, the actual call to action. She should just mention it if she just wants to create some credibility. And then the call to action here, I would be delighted to talk with the best contact. Uh, it's not a question. If it's a question, it's probably going to prompt a, a better response. So a few things, she could also easily personalize it by finding out the right contact at the organization. I did a quick LinkedIn search. I could find both the co-founders and I could easily find their emails. I'll show you how to do that. But uh, yeah, personalize it and then have a more specific call to action. Use a question, say, hey, are you interested in some support? Or maybe use that white narrow technique that I, that I talked about, right? Are you any of you available Monday this time or Tuesday this time? Or happy to work on your schedule as well. Uh, you can also use this technique effectively in other mediums. It doesn't have to be email. And this one you can see over here is a LinkedIn message. Uh, Elizabeth said, hey Chin, I've built a su successful product agency and I'm writing a profile series on onboarding do's and don'ts. Your name and background came up on my growth radar. Would you be open to sharing how you've converted traffic? This is amazing. This is one single paragraph and it does everything that I just mentioned, right? She's providing some context. Your name and background came up on my growth radar, which is at the time my title was head of growth. And then it's a uh, sincere and relevant praise. You know, she wants to feature me in her profile series and clear call to action would be open to sharing how you converted traffic. It's just a yes or no question. So we did end up speaking. Uh, this is one of my examples. Uh, so you can see over here again, not perfect, but a much better email. So, hey, Janet, great to meet you. I hope you are doing well. I could probably scratch that entire sentence out. I came across Teen Job Find on Gust, and I believe that we have aligned values to use business as a force for good. So I'm providing the context there, relevant and sincere praise. We both want to use business as a force for good. That last sentence, I would like to hear more about your impact-driven venture, probably could remove that. It distracts from the call to action. Uh, we help mission-driven companies around the world that are raising seed capital, and specifically this amount, especially if they're looking to raise it from impact investors. So that is a very relevant statement over there. Uh, that's the intro. It provides some context on why I'm reaching out to her. And then my call to action was wondering, are you currently raising a round or planning to in the next six months? I'm bolding it. It's a simple yes or no question. If it's yes, then we continue the conversation. If it's no, I disqualify her. I don't waste my time, right? Uh, and then I reiterate my intro. We specialize in providing training, coaching, and mentorship. Let me know, and repeating the ask again, let me know if you're raising capital and we can dig deeper. And results speak louder than words. This is just one of the many campaigns that I sent. This one was sent to 59 emails, 47 emails opened, 87% of that. 46 of the 47 of them that opened the email actually responded. So that's a 98% response rate. Uh, and I'll show you this tool later, but this is an, a good example of how you can actually send an effective email campaign and actually get good response. You can see some emails bounce, some of them said no, some said yes, some said maybe, but I'm shortening my sales cycle here. I'm not wasting my time with people who are not qualified. So that is it for this portion. And next I'm going to go into list building. So list building, how to find companies, how to find the right contact and how to find your emails. All right, let's take a look at list building. Uh, so first off, this is the entire process in a nutshell. This is more of a reference slide, don't worry about memorizing the entire thing, but it is actually quite simple. You start by finding a list of companies, you then figure out who the decision maker is, then you try to find your email, then you automate this process, and then you clean your list, review your messaging to make sure it's not too spammy, and then you hit send. That's the entire workflow. So let's look at them step by step. So there are quite a whole bunch of different ways to find companies. Uh, this is one way. You can use a tool like Growth Genius, uh, and it allows you to 
filter and find companies based on different um, categories like employee, industry, technology, keywords. So you can search and it, pull, it pulls from LinkedIn. Uh, you can also just uh, simply put in, you know, restaurants.cs, restaurants in Vancouver.csv or bcorp.csv. I actually put this in Google and I found a list of 10,000 B Corp uh, registered companies. Uh, so you can use this, you can use industry association. So actually, let me show you quickly. So I was looking up um, architects in Vancouver, uh, architect companies in Vancouver, and there's this Architectural uh, Institute of BC, and there's a directory here, right? So you can actually use it to search. Uh, many countries also have business registries. So you can see this is a government uh, business registration website. So you can filter based on region, you can filter based on keywords. Uh, and here you can see a whole bunch of different companies. So that's a, a few different ways to find companies. Once you find companies, then the next step is you need to figure out who to reach out to. So you can do that easily with a small or medium company by going to the About Us or team page. Usually the founder is there, you know, some of their key people like the VP of sales, you know, head of growth, those kind of roles. Depending on what you're selling, you will reach out to different people. If you can't find them on the website, uh, this works well for larger companies. You can go on LinkedIn, search the company page on LinkedIn, and you can see all 11 employees on LinkedIn. You can see over here on the right side of the company page, you can click on that and it will show you all, all of the employees. Uh, so here you can see James is also available here. Uh, you, you know, I could re reach out to James. Maybe I want to reach out to Jennifer. It really depends. Uh, and then now that you know who you're reaching out to, you can try and find an email. So you can use a tool like hunter.io there are a few other ones. Another one is, is called Viola Nobert. And uh, you put in the company's website and it will actually scrape the internet and find where any publicly available email related to the domain is posted. So you can see over here, it says common pattern is first name at spring.is and Keith Ippel is the co-founder, Keith at spring.is. Uh, so common patterns usually are first at, or sometimes it's first dot last at sometimes it's first underscore last, sometimes it's first hyphen last, sometimes it might be initial first name and then full last name, or maybe it's initial last name and the first full name. So you can try and experiment some of those things, but this will show you the exact format. Uh, and then once you have that, you start building a list. So you can see this is just one example list. You have your first name, last name, email, title, website, company name, and whatever else is relevant. You don't need to have everything, only put in what you need to use. So if you are trying to filter and you might send different messages to people in different industries or different uh, messages to people with uh, different size companies, maybe, you know, one to 10 employees, 10 to 50 employees. So if you need to filter, then you have them. If you don't need, don't waste your time, don't put it in. Then you have that process. It is quite manual. It is quite repetitive. This is where you want to use automation correctly, right? You want to make sure that your reps have more time to be human, to spend more time with your customers and clients. Uh, this list building thing, automate it. Outsource it, get a freelancer to do it for you. So Upwork is one platform you can use. Uh, and my advice here is if you are freelancing or outsourcing, make sure that you are clear on your instruction. You get what you pay for. So uh, freelancing, you normally get anywhere from you know, a few dollars per hour to upwards of maybe 10 or $20 per hour. But the idea here is uh, different freelancers provide different level of quality of work uh, and you have to be clear with ins instructions. So for example, you might say, if you can't find uh, a decision maker at a company, don't spend more than five minutes, move on to the next company, right? Or you might say, if you can't find a CEO, here are a few alternative uh, roles or titles that you can go after. You can go after HR manager, you can try to find someone in sales. Uh, so those are some instructions that you need, to, you need to be clear with so that they don't spend too much time. And you can uh, test and experiment. So what you can do is you can hire a bunch of different freelancers, give them the same instructions, but maybe different portions of the list and see how quickly they can build a list, how clean their data is, how accurate they are. Uh, and that's how you figure out who you want to continue, continue working with uh, in the future. So once you have your list then, this is an important part to not skip out on. Very important because when you are sending an email from your inbox, if you don't do it right, it will affect your entire domain name. So it's not going to affect like a MailChimp server because you're not sending on their behalf. You are sending through your domain. If people start to flag you as spam, it's going to damage your company. It's going to affect all of the emails coming from not only your inbox, but all of your employees' inbox as well. So number one, 
dedupe emails. You don't want to send like five emails to one person, right? So if the email accidentally gets entered twice, uh, make sure you dedupe and remove them. Uh, make sure you verify emails because what happens is if you send out a lot of emails and they bounce, Google will flag you as a spammy sender as well. So uh, how you verify is these are emails that could be typos. Maybe it's people who have left the organization. So you use an email verification tool. I'll show you a few of those. And then you tidy it up. Make sure you check the first name, the columns. Make sure you don't have like, hey, Michael Smith. That sounds a bit artificial. You want to say like, hey, Mike, right? Use first names. Uh, and then tidy company names as well. So you don't want to say, hey, I found Acme Co. LTD or Acme Co. Incorporated. So you remove those additional strings. You just say, hey, I found Acme Co. on LinkedIn, right? So make sure you tidy up the company name and the first name if you're using those uh, tags. So how do you tidy it up quickly? So you can use this tool called Power Tools. It's a Google Sheet add-on by Ablebits. It is a paid tool. Uh, I believe it's a one-time subscription fee. And you can use it to remove things like leading and training spaces, uh, remove uh, wording based on certain uh, character, maybe the first five characters. You can remove like trailing words like LTD or incorporated. Uh, so it'll help you just really quickly tidy up your list. This is the email checker tool that I use, Bulk Email Checker. There are a whole bunch of other tools out there. Uh, most of the free ones only give you a certain limit, like maybe you can verify 10 emails a day. Uh, this one is a paid tool. I find it allows me to quickly do a whole a bulk upload and it checks all my emails for me and I can just remove all of the, the broken emails. Uh, th so this is what it looks like. If the email doesn't work, it says address provided does not exist. If it exists, it will say it exists. Sometimes you might get MX unknown and that happens for um, companies where they have a catch-all server. So if it sends to an inbox that doesn't exist, they have another inbox that catches all of it. And there's no easy way around that, so I don't have an easy answer for it. You can test sending, and then if you get a bounce, then you can try a different email. You can change up the format. Like I mentioned, maybe instead of first at, maybe you try first dot last, and you can test around and see if you can get a right email. Now that you have the right emails, uh, the next step is you craft your email, and then you send your email to this uh, test inbox. So you go to mailtester.com, it will provide you with an email address that you can send your email to, and it will give you a score. It will tell you if you need to improve things like changing some of the wording, removing too many links, or if you need to verify your email account um, and your domains with uh, the, your email client. So once you have all of that done and you're ready to hit send, you put in the merge tags. Do you know that with merge tags, the format is different depending on what tool you're using. Sometimes they use these brackets, sometimes they use the rounded brackets, sometimes they use squiggly brackets, it doesn't really matter. But basically you say things like, hello, first name, I was browsing on platform for impactful companies that are in the sector space. And what merging will do, uh, mail merge will actually replace, let's say first name with hello, Amy, hello, Brian. So it'll send it all out on your behalf. This tool that I'm using is called yet another mail merge. It's a Google Sheet plugin. Uh, there are, I think in Outlook, it's already built into Microsoft Outlook. But the merge, um, yet another mail merge, how it works is you install the Google Sheet plugin. And then what you do is you open it up and you select the template from your draft emails. So you can see it's there in my draft emails. And then you basically hit send. So that is it in a nutshell. That's how you find companies. It's how you build your list, find the right contact info um, of the decision maker. So to sum it all up, send from your inbox if you can. Uh, mail merge and try to escalate the conversation. Don't try to close them in the first interaction. Be human, right? So when you're automating things, this is where you automate all of the tedious stuff. Uh, but the, the actual conversations, that is where you don't want to automate. You still want to remain human. And that is basically the entire presentation. So I hope you enjoyed this webinar. I hope you were able to actually see and understand how you can actually go out and find uh, contacts and actually change up how you actually craft your email so you get good, good response rates. Uh, here is my email chin at classynowell.com. You can connect with me on LinkedIn as well. Again, nothing to sell you, but if you are finding that uh, you got a lot of value from this and you believe that I can give you a lot more, feel free to chat with me if you want me to help you with sales techniques, um, optimizing your revenue, figuring out your pricing, uh, building your sales strategy. Those are all things that I can, that I can help you with. Uh, and until then, feel free to connect. I'll see you around.